OK, so we're going to look at the connection between rationalising the denominator of a fraction and dealing with a complex number in the denominator of a fraction. So our classic trick for rationalising the denominator is here we would multiply by 3 minus root 5 over 3 minus root 5. And this is carefully chosen so that we get a difference of two squares expression in the denominator, which will give us a whole number. So we had 3 squared minus root 5 squared. Then in the numerator, you've just got 3 minus root 5. So 3 squared minus root 5 squared, 9 minus 5 gives you 4. So our fully simplified fraction now is 3 minus root 5 over 4. There's a very similar trick we can use for the complex numbers as well. You'd multiply by the complex conjugate 4 minus i over 4 minus i. And this is again chosen so that in the denominator now, 4 squared minus i squared will give us a real number. And in the numerator, it's just 4 minus i. So you get 4 minus i over 16 minus, and i squared is minus 1, 16 minus minus 1 gives you 17. So you can see these two methods look very similar, but they're actually even more closely related than I'd previously realised. There's a nice way of seeing this. If you just write 1 over 4 plus i as 1 over 4 plus the square root of minus 1, you can see that this method for the complex numbers is actually exactly the same method as what we had earlier. We're just extending to include negative numbers in the square root. So then you'd multiply here by 4 minus root minus 1 over 4 minus root minus 1. So you get 4 minus root minus 1, which is 4 minus i, over 4 squared minus root minus 1 squared. So once again, we're just seeing 4 minus i over 17. And we can also extend this to include if you had a coefficient of i. So let's say you had 1 over 3 plus 2i, you could write this as 1 over 3 plus the square root of minus 4. So to get 2i, this is the same thing as root minus 4. Then once again, you could multiply this by 3 minus root minus 4 over 3 minus root minus 4. You get in the denominator 3 squared minus root minus 4 all squared. In the numerator, 3 minus root minus 4. So this will tidy up to give you 3 minus 2i over 9 minus minus 4, so 13 in the denominator. So I'm not suggesting that we actually should lay our work out using this with the square root of minus 1. It's much more convenient to use i's, but we'll see with an example now that this sort of insight can be quite helpful when we're solving problems. So now for this example, we need to deal with not only having a complex term in the denominator, but we also still need to rationalise the denominator as well. And we could, of course, do this by multiplying first by the complex conjugate. But let's just see what happens here when we write it with the square roots of negatives. I think this insight is quite useful because it allows us to see that the i term and your square root terms are essentially the same level of being a problem as each other. Ultimately, they're things that you need to square to get rid of, which will then give you some nice whole real numbers. So here, we're not immediately drawn necessarily to having to group these three terms together when it's written like this, like how we would if we had something where you've got the i term there. And it turns out that actually if you group them together in pairs for our difference of two squares approach, you're only going to get two problematic terms in the end after the first step versus, we'll go through the calculations in a sec as well for the complex conjugate approach, but here you'd end up with three problematic terms left to deal with. So what do I mean? Well, we're going to multiply by one plus root minus two minus root minus three minus root minus five over itself. And in the next line we'll get rid of this square roots of negatives. I don't think this is actually particularly helpful as notation, but I think the insight that we get from writing it this way is quite useful here, as we'll see. When you get something in the numerator, we don't care so much about what that is, but then in the denominator you've got 1 plus root 2i all squared, and minus root 3i minus root 5i all squared. And you can get rid of your i terms squared here. These will just give you a factor of minus 1. So you can turn this minus into a plus now. And when we expand the denominator, just again ignoring what the numerator is for now, you get 1 plus 2 root 2i, and then minus 2 from the root 2i term squared. And then from this term, you get a plus 3 plus 5 minus 2 root 15. So you can see there are only really two problematic terms left, 2 root 2i and minus 2 root 15. Let's just compare this to what we would get in the denominator had we used the complex conjugate approach. You'd have a slightly different numerator, and now in your denominator you'd have 1 squared plus root 2 plus root 3 minus root 5 all squared, which when we expand here 
you get, once again, ignoring the denominator, you have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 from squaring each of these. But we have more cross-multiplication terms, which give us more square roots. So you'll actually have plus 2 root 6 from your root 2s and 3s, and minus 2 root 10 from the root 2 and the minus root 5, and also minus 2 root 15 from the root 3 and root minus 5. So here you've got, they are all real, but that doesn't particularly help us here, because we've got three problematic terms versus only having two there. So I think it's really interesting that we can use this insight with the square roots of negatives to actually potentially help us solve a problem slightly more efficiently even if it is for a very specific sort of problem. So all that's left now is actually finishing off rationalising the denominator and making sure that there's no imaginary terms in there as well. So we just write all of this now as dot 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 in the numerator. We'll multiply the top and bottom. It doesn't really matter how we split this up from here. There's nothing particularly to be gained. So we'll go with 7 minus 2 root 15 minus 2 root 2i. Then in the denominator, you'll have 7 minus 2 root 15 all squared minus 2 root 2i all squared for our difference of two squares terms. So then when we expand in the denominator, just ignoring what's in the numerator, you get 49 minus 28 root 15, then plus 2 root 15 squared gives you a 60, then minus 2 root 2i all squared actually gives you a plus 8. So then we get in the denominator, adding up 49 plus 60 plus 8 is 117, then minus 28 root 15. You can see from here there's only one step remaining now, which is just to multiply the top and bottom by 117 plus 28 root 15. So then I'm not going to go through the details of expanding the brackets in the numerator, this is quite messy. But basically in the end, for your real part, you'll get 447 plus 46 root 6 plus 66 root 10 plus 74 root 15. So that's just your real part, and then the denominator you'll get 117 squared minus 28 root 15 squared, which gives you 1,929. And that's just the real part as well. So for the imaginary part, you'll have plus minus 225 times root 3, minus 169 times root 3, so this should be a root 2. Then plus 93 root 5, and finally minus 94 root 3. 30. So this is your imaginary term, and again with the same denominator, 1,929. So we've now rationalised the denominator and also got rid of the complex term there. Looking at how complicated this is, this makes me think maybe there's a simpler example than this to illustrate where this insight of the square roots of negatives could potentially be helpful.